Hey, what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithbin.com. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the amazing world of Adobe Firefly and Photoshop Generative Fill. These are two of Adobe's leading AI enhancements that have recently been added to their product line. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the process of using this new technology to create stunning AI generated images and logos for your WordPress blog or website. Now, real quick, before we get started, if you get any value from this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Doing so helps me keep this channel going and growing, and it also allows you to stay up to date with all the AI and WordPress trends that are happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna be using Adobe Firefly Beta and Photoshop Beta to create and design AI-generated logos, but we're also going to add Canva into the mix. Now, Canva isn't required for this tutorial, but there are some cool features I wanna show you. Either way, if you're brand new to these tools, then this section of the video will briefly go over them and show you how to gain access to each one. However, if you already have access, feel free to skip ahead to the next section of the tutorial. All right, first we have Adobe Firefly. And this is a new family of creative generative AI models focusing on image and text effect generation. And in this video, we'll be using their text to image generation and generative fill. Both are free and exciting AI technologies that offer new ways to create while significantly improving your workflows. Now, Adobe Firefly is currently in beta, but you can access their web client for free by visiting firefly.adobe.com, which I've linked to in the video description below, and that will bring you to the page that you're looking at right now. Then in order to actually use Firefly, you'll need a free Adobe account. So to get started, click on the sign in button in the upper right corner of the screen. And this will take you to the sign in page, but if you're a brand new user, you'll need to create a new account. So go ahead and click the create an account link. And then it's pretty straightforward. You could sign up using an Apple, Google, or Facebook account or you can enter an email address, create a password, and click the continue button. Both will allow you to create a free Adobe account. Then not shown here, Adobe will send you a confirmation email to the email address that you signed up with, and all you'll do is click on that link in the email to confirm your account. And then once your account is confirmed, you can access the Adobe Firefly Beta and Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. And speaking of Creative Cloud, if you plan on using Photoshop Beta, you'll need to download Creative Cloud to your desktop. This is free as well, but you'll need to purchase a subscription to Photoshop in order to use the new beta version, which I believe runs about $20 per month, but you could try it out for free for seven days. Either way, the Creative Cloud app is still free and you can download it here at this page, which I've linked to in the video description below. And to get started, click the download Creative Cloud button and this will download the installer to your computer, which is not shown here, but all you'll do is open and launch the installer where you'll follow a few simple prompts to set up the Creative Cloud app on your computer. It's pretty straightforward, but if you have any issues, feel free to reach out in the comments and I'd be more than happy to help you out. Then once the Creative Cloud app has been installed, you may have to sign in with your Adobe ID and password, but it'll look like this. Creative Cloud provides apps, web services, and resources for all of your creative projects. And for this tutorial in particular, it's where you can subscribe to Photoshop Beta. You can try it out for seven days for free, but just visit the beta section here and you could sign up for a subscription to gain access. Then finally, we have Canva. And this is a website that you can access at canva.com, which I've linked to in the video description below as well. And we'll visit it a little later on when we start designing our logo template. But those are the tools we're gonna use. And if you have any trouble getting started, like I said, feel free to reach out in the comments and I'd be more than happy to assist you in any way that I can. All right, with that being said, let's create our AI generated logo using Adobe Firefly. Okay, now the fun begins. Now we're going to experiment with Adobe Firefly AI and create some really cool logos. So head over to the Adobe Firefly website if you aren't there already. And really quick before we get started, they have an awesome Discord server that I highly recommend joining. You can gain access here by clicking the join the Discord button in the upper right corner of the screen. This is a great place to connect, learn, and collaborate with other users and Adobe professionals. I've learned a ton here and they're always hosting live events where they stream and walk you through different use cases with Firefly. It's just a great place to learn and take your skills to a new level. 
It's free too. So sign up for a Discord account if you don't have one and join the Adobe Firefly server. Okay, back at Firefly, let's create our logo. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we're going to create our logo using the text to image feature. And it should be the first one listed there. So go ahead and click the generate button. And this will bring you to the prompt generation page. At least that's what I like to call it. And this is not only where you'll enter your text prompt, but it's where you can explore other AI generated images and their prompts to see what other people are creating with Firefly. And when you have some extra time, feel free to explore these images and test out their prompts by clicking on any of these images listed here. But for right now, let's create our logo. So to use Firefly, the idea here is that you'll just describe your image and text form within the field provided, and then the AI will get to work. We could really do a whole video on prompts and the strategy behind them, but I recommend that you keep your prompts somewhat short, but try to be as descriptive as possible. For example, my prompt is going to be a logo for an ice cream brand, vector, psychedelic art with no background. Now, feel free to experiment with different prompts that include styles, particular artists, colors, etc. But once you've entered your prompt, click the generate button and the AI will begin designing. Now, it typically takes less than 60 seconds for the images to appear, but when they're ready, Firefly will give you four variations of the text prompt that you entered. How cool is that? Wow. Now, one thing I love about Adobe Firefly is its user interface. This is probably the most user-friendly AI image generative tool I've used so far. And the reason I say that is due to the editing features you have here on the right-hand side of the screen. After Firefly generates the images, you can get even more creative by changing the aspect ratio, content type, styles, color and tone, lighting, and composition, all from this little sidebar menu. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna keep the aspect ratio one to one due to the fact that this is a logo, but feel free to experiment with different sizes here if you want. Then for the content type, since I added psychedelic art to the description, the AI automatically used the art content type in the generation. As you can see, it's already selected and added here. You'll also see that the various content types and styles are added below the description where you can remove them and regenerate the image if you'd like. Pretty cool. But I wanted to change the content type to show you what it does to the image. So instead of art, I'll select photo. And when I do, Firefly automatically regenerates the image in order to use the new content type. So just sit tight really quick while the AI does its thing and check that out. We get a similar yet different variation of the image due to the new content type. Then let's keep going and change the content type to graphic. Give the AI a few seconds to regenerate. And whoa, those are really cool, I love it. Then for the sake of this example, let's select none for the content type. And there are the new variations of our prompt. Still some really impressive results, but I think I like the graphic content type better. So I'll go ahead and reselect that one. There we go. Next, let's take a look at the different styles. By default, it started me with the popular styles, but didn't select any. So let's try concepts and then chaotic. Again, when added, you'll see the styles added below the prompt. Helps you stay organized and keep track of the changes that you're making to the prompt. Also keep in mind that you can add multiple styles to a single prompt, but for this example, I'm just using the chaotic style. Then with the added styles, you have to regenerate the prompt. So after you add them, be sure to click the generate button to see the updated versions of the images. And boom, man, this never gets old. I love playing with this tool. Anyways, now that we have our new images, you can go even further and experiment with the color and tone, lighting and composition, but for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. Okay, so I think I'm gonna use one of these images for my logo, and if you click on any of the images, you can take a closer look at it and cycle through the larger versions of the images as well. Again, just another cool feature to let you review and inspect what the AI created. All right, I really like this one. So now that I've honed in on an image I wanna use, let's move on to the next magic trick and use the Adobe Generative Fill feature. You can access it directly from the image that you wanna use here in Firefly. Simply hover your mouse over the image and click this little circle icon in the upper left corner. And this will take you and the image over to the Generative Fill web client. 
All right, moving on. Next, let's use Adobe Firefly's generative fill and enhance the AI generated image even further. In this portion of the tutorial, we're going to use Generative Fill, which is Adobe's new AI enhanced tool that gives users the ability to add new content, replace the background, and remove unwanted parts of an image. Simply brushing an area and providing an optimal prompt allows you to do everything from touching up small areas to making radical changes to your uploaded images. Now, we obviously are using the image we just generated with Firefly, but you can always visit the Adobe Firefly homepage and within the Generative Fill section, click the Generate button. And this will give you the ability to upload your own image to use by clicking the Upload Image button. Or you could practice on any of these examples. Simply hover your mouse and click on any of these images and you could test out and practice using the Generative Fill on these images. Pretty cool. However, for this example, let's go back to our ice cream logo. And this is the web client generative fill interface. And as of now, this is free and you can do a lot of really cool things with it. However, they just added generative fill to Photoshop beta, which we'll cover a little later on in the video. But this option using the web client is a great way to get started with the new technology. Okay, so the user interface of the web client is pretty straightforward, but if you're brand new, let me give you a quick tour. I should point out that I'm filming this tutorial in June of 2023, so with how fast all this tech is moving, what you see on your end may be different from this video depending on when you're viewing it. But either way, this is what Adobe's generative fill web client entails as of June 2023. Okay, so we obviously have our image in the middle of the screen. Then on the left are the insert, remove, and pan features. You'll use the insert tool when you want to add an object into an image or modify an existing object, which we'll do in a few moments. Then use the remove tool when you want to remove an object. It's basically like an erase brush. Then the pan feature lets you move the canvas and reposition the image within your browser. Then looking below the image, you'll see additional tools that you could use to edit the image and create with the generative fill. Starting on the left, the add and subtract are essentially like the insert and remove tools, but here the subtract tool only removes what you've inserted. Hopefully I'm not confusing you too much, but as we start using it, you'll see how it works. Next to that are the brush settings. This is where you could change the size, hardness, and opacity of the brush. Next is the remove background feature, and clicking this does exactly what you think it does. It quickly scans the image and removes the background, pretty efficiently I might add. Then the invert option switches the area that is removed from the background to the main focal point of the image. And we'll use this in just a bit so you can see how it all works. Finally is the clear button. And this lets you remove all changes before you decide to keep them. It's basically an undo button that reverts all the changes before you save things. But if you save the image, you can't clear the changes that you just made, just FYI. Then once you're done making all the edits to your image, you can download it on your computer by clicking the download button in the upper right corner of the screen. Then the little beaker icon next to that lets you submit feedback and ideas to Adobe. And then that three dot icon lets you copy your images and publish them to Adobe Firefly's gallery. All right, so now that you know your way around the generative fill web client, let's test it out and start working on this image. So the first thing I wanna do is use the generative fill feature and add some design elements to this image. So I'll make sure we have the insert option selected and then click on the add button below the image. Then with the brush tool, paint the section of the image that you want the AI to edit and fill. So let's say I wanna add something on top of the ice cream. And in my mind, I wanna add a cherry. So I'm gonna paint it in the shape of a cherry. Now I don't know if that necessarily does anything or if you need to do that. I believe that you just need to make some space for the new element, but I'm just testing this out. Then in the field below, describe the image that you wanna generate. And like I said, I want a cherry on top and I'll keep with the psychedelic art style. Then once filled out, click the generate button and the AI goes to work and begins generating some options for you to choose from. And check that out. We have four options to choose from. The first one looks a bit off, but still kind of cool. And then we can browse the other options by clicking the arrow button there. And as you can see, the AI has given us some great options to choose from. But if you don't like any of them, you could always generate more by clicking the more button. And this will generate some more options of the images. And we'll give it a few seconds to do its thing. Just sit tight really quick. And there we go. How cool is that? 
And then once again, you can rifle through the different generations by clicking either one of these arrows. And you can browse through the different variations to see which one you like. So once you decide on the one that you want to keep, click the Keep button. And this adds the newly generated image to the overall design. So cool. Okay, let's keep creating. So I'm going to insert and add another element to this design. And this time I'm going to add a straw sticking out. So follow the same steps as before to add the desired location of the new element with the brush tool. Then in the text field, describe what you want to add. And again, we're adding a straw sticking out in psychedelic art style. Then click the generate button and the AI gets to work creating four variations of that new image. And just like that, we have a straw. Again, clicking the arrows will let you browse the different options. And we have some red ones, but I think I like the first one best. So let's go ahead and keep this option. So click the keep button. Perfect. Now for the sake of time, I'm not gonna add any more new elements to this image within the web client. We still need to visit Photoshop beta and I'll show you how to add the generative fill to the image using Photoshop. But either way, feel free to experiment and test different variations and images within the Adobe Firefly generative fill web client. Okay, next let's quickly cover the rest of these tools you have access to below the image. So we went over the insert and add feature when using it to create space for the AI to insert a new element into the image. But what if you don't like the space created or if you wanna redo it? Well, that's where the subtract brush comes into play. So after you use the add brush, if you change your mind or need to edit the space created, simply select the subtract brush and it will essentially allow you to repair or replace the section you just created with the add brush. Next is the background tool. And clicking this will remove what the AI believes to be the background. It's usually pretty on point with what it removes and it does it lightning fast, I might add. You can also use the invert option and it swaps what is removed from the background to the subject. It's pretty cool. Then check this out. Now that you've removed the background, you can use the generative fill tool and add any background you want. So just like our cherry and straw in the text field, describe what you want the AI to fill the background with. And I'm gonna be boring and say I want blurry, iridescent, organic shapes. And then we'll click the generate button and the AI goes to work and we'll use the generative fill to add four options of the blurry iridescent organic shapes to the background. You really have a ton of creative freedom with this tool, but I just wanted to show you some other options in terms of how to use the generative fill. Okay, so these are great, but if you don't like these options given, you can always click the cancel button and it will revert back to the original state before we used the generative fill. Then you can even go further back and click the clear button and it will basically undo all of the last actions taken, which in this case was the removal of the background. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the Adobe Firefly Generative Fill web client. We'll go even further with the design when using Photoshop beta in a few moments, but feel free to continue to use this free tool within your browser and experiment with the AI if you don't wanna use Photoshop. All right, so now that we're done creating in the web client, you can download the image onto your computer by clicking the download button in the upper right corner of the screen. Then before the download takes place, you'll get a pop-up from Adobe in regards to their transparency and AI. This is basically telling you that after you download the image, the content credentials will be included, letting people know that it was generated using AI. This is a great step towards ethics and transparency when designing with AI, and I like that they're doing this, but either way, Read it through when you have some time and click the continue button to begin the download. Now, one thing I wanna point out before we move on to Photoshop is that all the images created with Adobe Firefly Beta are not for commercial use for the time being. So that's why all of the images you download from here will have a watermark in the bottom corner stating that this is not for commercial use. And we're gonna remove it in this tutorial, but I wanna make clear that as of June, 2023, these images should not be used for commercial use. And I think in the future, they're changing that policy, but I just wanted to make that clear. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's move on and use generative fill in the new and improved Photoshop beta. In this portion of the tutorial, we're gonna use the new Photoshop beta generative fill to go even further with our logo design. The Adobe Firefly web client was amazing, but Photoshop beta gives you much more creative freedom and control. 
So if you recall at the beginning of the tutorial, we went over how to download Photoshop beta and you'll need an Adobe account and the Creative Cloud app downloaded on your computer. Then you'll be able to access and subscribe to Photoshop. Then once you have the app open from here, let's open the image we just created and designed with Firefly. So within Photoshop beta, open a smart object and this will allow you to open the image instead of having to create a canvas with specific dimensions. This way your canvas automatically fits the dimensions of the image. There we go. Then the first thing I'm gonna do is use the generative fill to remove the Adobe Firefly watermark. Again, this is just for the sake of the tutorial. This image isn't for commercial use and I'm doing this for informational purposes only, but check this out. We can use the generative fill tool within Photoshop beta to quickly remove this from the corner of the image. So anytime you wanna use the generative tool, you'll need to select the area you wanna edit. And one way to do that is with the rectangular marquee tool. And you can select it here from the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen or click M on your keyboard. Either way, once you have the marquee tool activated, you'll simply use it to select the area you wanna edit like so. Then you'll see the generative fill toolbar appear near the selected area. And from here, you have additional settings and tools to choose from. And for this tutorial, we're just using the generative fill tool, which is selected by default. So go ahead and click where it says generative fill. And then you'll be presented with a text box, much like the Adobe Firefly web client, where you can enter what you want the AI to generate. But if you wanna remove something, just leave that blank and click the generate button. And then the AI goes to work and you'll be presented with a progress bar, letting you know how much longer it is before the task is complete. Usually takes less than 30 seconds. So let's just sit tight really quick while it does its thing. And boom, just like that, the Generative Fill AI has removed the watermark and replaced it with what it feels is the best fit for the image. Amazing stuff. Now, anytime you use the Generative Fill within Photoshop Beta, it creates a new layer, as well as it gives you three variations that you can review within the Properties tab. Now, this is just the blue background, so we'll keep the first variation and move on. Next, let's use the Generative Fill tool to add some more design elements to this image. So this time I'm gonna use the lasso tool to make my selection and you can click L on your keyboard to access the lasso. Then I'm gonna use it to draw a circle in the middle of the ice cream cone because this is the area that I want the AI to generate a new element to add to this image. So check this out, let's draw the circle. Then from the toolbar, click the generative fill button and this time I'm gonna describe what I want the AI to create. So in the text box, type what you wanna see, and I want an eyeball in the psychedelic art style, and I even misspelled eyeball, but you'll see that the AI still understands what I mean, even though I can't spell apparently. And then let's go ahead and click the generate button, and the AI goes to work, creating variations for you to choose from. And this typically takes around 30 seconds to generate, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna speed through this really quick. And check that out. We have our psychedelic art style eyeball, where as you can see in the properties tab, we have the original prompt and the three variations to choose from, as well as our new layer. Then to browse the images, you can do so in the properties tab or the toolbar, but these let you cycle through different options of what the AI generated. Then all you'll do is click these little arrows in the toolbar and you can review each option to see how it looks with the original image and they all look really good and kind of creepy, I might add, but still, it's just an amazing tool and we're only scratching the surface, but I digress. All right, so we can add more options to choose from by clicking the generate button again, and the AI will generate more variations of the eyeball to choose from. Then just so you don't have to sit through the process of this generating, let me speed through this really quick. And as you can see, we have six options to choose from. And cycling through these, Clicking the arrows, we can see what the AI has generated. And it's always super interesting to see how the AI interprets the prompts. And these eyeballs look really good, kind of creepy, but again, that's what we're going for. So I'm pretty happy with this. All right, so I think I'm gonna go with this one. Then let's get even weirder and add some teeth. So I'm gonna speed through this one for the sake of time, but I'll use the lasso tool to carve out some space for the image. Then click the generative fill button. And within the text box, I'll add my prompt, which will be teeth, psychedelic art, and then click the generate button. And let's see how the AI thinks trippy teeth should look. 
Well, these look like gummy buck teeth. <laughs> and that looks like lipstick. Those are pretty bad too. So let's generate some more to see what it comes up with. So click the generate button again, and I'll speed through this again to save you some time. And those are even weirder. Some of these don't even really look like teeth. It's just a white blob. But I think I think I like these the best. So we'll keep that selected. And we have our ice cream teeth. Again, you can review the prompt and variations in the properties tab, as well as the new layer in the layers panel. Speaking of layers, since these two new images were added as their own separate layer, you can disable them if you'd like by unchecking the eyeball icons next to each layer. Again, just another example of the creative control you have in Photoshop over the Firefly web client. Okay, next I wanna remove the background. But since we have two active layers, both with different backgrounds, I wanna merge these two layers. So I'll select my original layer by clicking on it in the layer panel. Then I'm gonna max, so I'll press and hold the command key down while selecting the layer or layers I wanna merge with. So I'll select my only active generative fill layer. And there we go. You'll see that they are both highlighted, meaning they're both selected. Then to merge the two and make them one layer, simply click Command E on your keyboard or Control E if you're on a PC. And we now have one layer, which will make it easier to remove the background. Make sure you have that layer selected, which we do. Then within the toolbar below the image, click the Remove Background button. And the AI scans the image and removes what it thinks is the background. And there we go, pretty good. But there are some edges that seem a little rough, so this is where the advantages of Photoshop come into play. For example, I could use my eraser tool and clean some of these edges up, so let me do that really quick. You can click E on your keyboard for the shortcut, but once selected, I'll just smooth these edges out and try to clean up anything that I think the AI may have missed. And for the sake of time, I'll speed through this, but I hope you're starting to see how amazing this AI technology is. But I also hope that you're seeing that there is a human element of collaboration to this process as well. And with all the AI hype and mania hitting the mainstream, it's easy for people to fear monger and say AI is taking your job, but I think it's the exact opposite. I feel that it only enhances the human experience and can make us much more creative and efficient. And when it's used in this capacity, obviously, I'm sure there are other use cases out there that could be viewed as a threat to the job market, but for designers, I truly believe it's an enhancement. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now, and I think that looks pretty good. So let me add a layer behind it. Then I'll drag that new layer to the bottom of the layer panel. Then I'll use my paint bucket to fill this new layer with the color black. And you could press G on your keyboard to select the paint bucket tool and then make sure we have black selected there, and we do. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can create a black background to help me see if I missed any areas while erasing. And this just helps me clean it up a bit. Now I could obviously do some more work on this and get it perfect, but this will do for now. Okay, next let's add some effects to this image. So let's make sure we have the correct layer selected, then click the FX icon at the bottom of the screen, and let's add some stroke to this image. Then from the effects pop-up, these are my settings. Feel free to experiment with different settings, but this is what I'm using. And as you can see, it's added this nice white outline to the image. Then let's take this a step further and add some bevel and emboss to it. So from the style list in the same pop-up, you can add additional styles like so. Just make sure they're selected. And these are my structure settings for this style. Again, feel free to test different settings if you'd like. Then for the shading, if you click this little gloss contour icon, you can change the types of shading being used. This is pretty cool because it adds a 3D effect to the image, almost making it look like one of those puffy stickers you used to get as a kid when you went to the dentist. <laughs> Anyways, those are some cool ways to get creative with the image. And once you're done, don't forget to click the OK button to save and implement these edits to the layer. And there we go. Then let me select the black layer to see how it looks against a solid color. We obviously need to clean up the edges again, so I'll select my eraser tool and smooth these out. And for the sake of time, I'm going to speed through this, but hopefully you get the idea. Now, I could obviously clean this up even more, but this will do for now. I think it looks pretty good. Then now that we have our image, let's save it so that we could use it in our logo template within Canva. You could obviously continue the design process here within Photoshop, and by all means, if that's what you're comfortable with and it's your workflow, go for it. But 
I really like the logo templates in Canva and they actually save me a lot of time. So that's why I like using Canva for the next part of this video, especially when I'm creating logos, but either way, do what is most comfortable for you and your workflow. Now, I realized I was talking while I was exporting this image, but I exported this logo as a PNG with a transparent background because that's what we're gonna use in Canva, just FYI. Then I'm not gonna go through the entire design process again, but I used Photoshop beta to remove the remaining background so that the cone was the main subject of our image. And I was just playing around with some options for the logo design, but again, the creative freedom of Photoshop beta allowed me to do that. Okay, moving on, next, let's take these images over to Canva and use them in one of their pre-made logo templates. In this final portion of the tutorial, we're gonna take our AI-generated image that we cleaned up in Photoshop Beta and add it to a logo template provided by Canva. And if you're new to Canva, just swing by canva.com, which is where we're at right now. And I've linked to this in the video description below. And all you'll do is create a free account. And after you sign up, you'll have access to their design software and thousands of templates that you can use to create your own logos, presentations, social images, and so much more. So I'm currently at my Canva account and I should point out that I am using the pro account in this video. All this means is that I paid for their premium plan which gives me access to more features and templates. Just FYI as we design this logo. And then from Canva, if you select templates, this will take you to all of their available templates and then you can browse by category or search by keyword in the search bar towards the top of the screen. And for this example, I want a neon logo, so I'll search using those keywords. And then Canva will present various logo templates that fall under the neon logo category. As you can see, they have a ton of options to choose from, but once you find one that you like, go ahead and click on it to get a better look at that template. And even though this is a muscle car themed logo, I love the design and colors, so we'll go ahead and go with this one. So click the customize this template button and this will take you to the editor interface. This is pretty revolutionary in my opinion. Canva changed the game because instead of app-based graphic design software, they have a web-based editor within your browser that gives you a ton of creative freedom in terms of tools, templates, fonts, etc. And once you start using it, I think you'll really like it. But either way from here, the template will be displayed on the right-hand side of the screen and everything here is customizable. As you hover your mouse over different elements, you'll see the borders guiding you on what is customizable and what you could change. And then it's pretty straightforward. You'll just click on an element to select it and then make your changes. And I'll remove the muscle car and change this text to say Smash House Ice Cream. There we go, super easy. Then let's add our AI generated ice cream cone logo from Adobe. So in the toolbar on the left-hand side of the screen, click on the uploads icon and this gives you the ability to upload assets and use them within Canva. So click the Upload Files button and then find the image that you want to use. And there we go. Then it may take a few seconds to upload to Canva, so just sit tight really quick. Then once it's ready, go ahead and click on it and drag and drop it within the template like so. And then you can move it around and resize it and do a lot more here within the template. Again, I'm not trying to do a hard sell on Canva. I know some people like it, some people don't, but I personally like it. it saves me a ton of time and I like the results. I'm gonna move this down a bit so that it's centered and there we go. Looks great too, love it. All right, then just for the sake of this example, let me show you what the other AI generated ice cream cone looks like in this template. And just like that, we have a new and unique logo that can be used across multiple channels and digital platforms like a WordPress blog or website. And I should point out that even though these AI generated images aren't approved for commercial use, there's no harm in learning how to use this tool to create logos because I believe that Adobe will have some sort of licensing available in the near future for AI generated images to be used for commercial use. But again, don't quote me on that. I have no idea. I am not affiliated with Adobe. That's just my personal opinion. But for now, you can experiment and build on your skills using these AI generated images and tools. All right, so I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Remember, engaging images are key to capturing your audience's attention and enhancing the overall user experience of your brand and WordPress blog or website. 
If you have any questions or want to see more content like this, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'm always happy to help out. And if you enjoyed this tutorial and found it valuable, I'd greatly appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who you think may benefit from it. But either way, thanks for watching and have fun with this new technology. So that's going to do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're thinking about starting a blog, you got to check out my step-by-step -step tutorials. They'll show you everything you need to know in order to build, grow, and monetize a professional WordPress blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.